Hello. This is a certified hood classic. That is right. Sure. Yeah. Another Saturday, another live episode of the Comics Pals. Uh, welcome. Uh, say hello as you join us in the Twitch chat. Always, uh, always a good time with you guys. We got a, we got a show planned today. Uh, as ever, we are Marcoless. Uh, we lost our child. Still haven't been able to find him. At this point. Uh, I am assuming the worst. Yeah, the wolf's our boy. Him. Yeah. yeah. Um, or he's he could be being raised by them, raised by wolves. Oh, uh, by uh, what's his face? Dude, alien. Who? Oh, that's it's a it's a show raised by wolves on HBO by uh, the guy who uh, did that movie about uh, the last duel that nobody liked. Why is his name Skip Ridley Scott? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Noted got- comic book movie fan Ridley Scott. We got uh, Trap Zord in the chat. We got C.W. Gordon. We got Kefis. We got welcome. the classics. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, So, unfortunately, unfortunately, we do have to start the show. Um, I can't. There's no other way to start the show. Uh, we have to talk about, you know, a real, um, a real tragedy. Uh Modoc on Hulu was actually canceled. Oh my god, Sean. <laughs> I don't have yep. a slide for that. That's okay. <laughs> it's it, it's you no know, one watched it, so it's it's not even, you know, there's there is no slide. No one's seen it. Did we do a review of it? We did do a review of it, and no one saw that either. Yeah. So um <laughs> boy, that show sucked. Yeah, oh, Kefis watched it. Hey, I like right, it. Right, right. No I'm one a watched noted it. Modoc fan too. I have at least three Modoc t-shirts. It was good. Like the first episode was solid. I didn't like it was, you know, it was all right. It was it was uh it all right. Look, it wasn't I like I didn't like the animation. It yeah. kind of freaked me out, you know. It, it's, yeah. 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 <laughs> Mechanized <laughs> organism design only for cancellation. <laughs> Which like you could have read the tea leaves on that one from before it even came out. Like Modoc yeah. is not the guy to get a solo series that does well. I don't think. It it was a cool engine for that uh robot chicken animation, but um I don't know. No thanks. Yeah. Agreed. Uh in all seriousness though, just a little just a little humor before we get into something that is actually sad. Um George Perez unfortunately has died. Mm. Um, it was, you know, it was something that we all knew was coming. George has been in poor health for some time now. Um, it actually happened last Saturday. Um, we were recording our Dr. Strange review and we learned the news. Um, it, it dropped during that. Um, and it's, it's horribly sad. You know, it's coming and you sort of brace yourself, but there's no way to prepare yourself for, when someone whose work has had such a tremendous impact on your life, on the thing that you enjoy. I mean, comics are the thing that I enjoy the most um, in terms of my hobbies. And it's created so much beauty for me as a person, so much um, of my life and what I love is, is about comics. And here is a titan of industry who legitimately is responsible for so much of it. Um, and he, and he has passed 67 years old. Um, from what we know, he was surrounded by friends and family the whole way through. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. So many people, because we knew where, where, you know, how his life was going to end and when pretty much, um, so many people, family, friends, industry people were able to, you know, reach out to him, see him uh, in his, in, you know, in his last days. I think it was, um, I hope I'm right about this. Kurt Busiek um, had talked about how he had been able to, to, to see him um, and how great that was for him, you know, for both of them. And George, George was always the one, whenever people would go see him, who was spry and upbeat and trying to keep things light, you know, knowing that 
his time was coming to an end, but he just didn't want to wallow in that. And that makes sense to me for a guy who lived his life in color, you know, um, for a guy who lived his life through art, through love to not want his last days to be spent sad. Um, and for the people around him to not spend their time sad, I think is really a beautiful thing. And I think he brought joy to the lives of people throughout his entire life. And that's dedication that most people don't put into their life um, to make people happy. Mm. And um, I'm so, so grateful for, for George. I see uh, Tyler has in the video um, uh, George Perez, a, a picture of him smiling, happy. This is actually one of the things that I think about when I see him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those like kind of Hawaiian inspired shirts and, yeah. you know, that, that smile of king of the crazy pattern button down shirt yeah like like no joke and this is maybe weird but like anytime i saw him wearing that those shits like those like bowler shirts and i'm like man i kind of i kind of want to cop that fit you know it's the dream like, right like i have a lot of shirts like that like honestly because i'm like oh this dude could fucking pull it off i'm gonna do that like yeah if we, just if we can comfort. take one thing from george Perez's yeah. legacy <laughs> It's absolutely his look. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you to Matt Man Begins and uh, Wednesday Poll for the follows on Twitch. Appreciate it. Hey, um, Matt Man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, check out Matt Man's comic, uh, The Bardic Verses. Hmm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, we actually had him on the last Journey, to journey into Quistery. Yeah. yeah. Which is really fun. Um, coming soon, guys. Coming soon. Yep. The return. It's, it's, it's um great. But yeah, I, I, I want to I wanna make sure that, you know, George Perez, we remember him. You know, we remember him um, not just for the amazing art, not just for the mind, you know, the mind of someone who was able to do so many incredible things within this industry in Marvel and DC, you know, but that we remember the kindness and the good spirit and the good nature. Because those things somehow are harder to come by. So thank you, George. And and this guy has like I have not seen anything bad come out about George Prez ever. No, like universally liked would be an, an understatement, honestly, uh, for him. And like the impact his art has made on the big two, I, just in superhero comics in general. I like I do not know of anyone who's had like outside of like. Kirby and Stan, such mm -hmm. an impact on what the general consensus knows as American superhero comics. Yeah. Like, it's George Press on both sides, which is insane. Um, also draws the best Scarlet Witch. I will say that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. George, George's uh, Scarlet Witch is up there. And, and yeah. you know, a lot of the characters that he draws mm -hmm. are some of the more iconic versions of that character that we still mm -hmm. see today. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, all credit, all credit to the king. Uh, he, will, he will be missed. He will be missed indeed. Yep. Yeah. Uh, hello, Catherine. Welcome. Um, so, of course, you know, a, a down way to start the show, but we're going to have a lot of fun today. Uh, this I solemnly promise or your money back. Uh, uh -oh. I do. Uh oh. <laughs> hey, uh, I have a game, and I don't know if it's gonna be that fun. So <laughs> it's, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. all right. Okay, uh, all right. Tomorrow, of course, a a everything we do is fun. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at you with the mug. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. actually sipping uh, water out of my Comics Pals mug. I got my Comics Pals mug. I got my my pinky out. I That's drink. Some... Fancy. Why are you covering my face? That's not fair. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just the way it shook out. It's just the way it shook out. Um, but uh, you can you can actually acquire uh, a mug just like this mm -hmm. in our store. We've got a link to it in the description of wherever you're listening to this. If you want to support the show, there are plenty of ways you can do that. Start your Saturdays with the Comics Pals by going to twitch.tv slash the Comics Pals and tuning in every single Saturday at 10 15 Eastern AM. Uh, we're always having a great time here. You can catch Pals Pulls at 6 p.m. Eastern every single Thursday. 
Uh, this week, we reviewed five big books, including Grim Number One, which was a big hit, uh, Captain America, Symbol of Truth Number One, Jurassic League, and everyone's favorite, Spawn, it's a good 329. Week. We loved it. It was a really good week for comics. In general, um, I, ca- I caught up on everything yesterday. I was like, oh, shit, that was a good ass week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Especially that spawn. I tell you. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Wolf. Patreon.com slash the comics pals. Uh, we've got a variety of tiers there for any sort of fan, whatever your ability is to support the show. Uh, you can definitely do that at patreon.com slash the comics pals. I want to shout out these fine folks who are subscribed to us over there. $10 or more will get you a superhero or supervillain nickname and a shout out here on this very show. So thank you to Thunderstruck, Rebecca Alejandro, the Night Stalker, Harris Najinsky, Brian Demolisher Del Pozo, to Lisa the Jaguar and Random Rocio, the Courageous Kunaladas. Kefis the Incorruptible, The Great Destroyer, Hyper Viper 89, Momentum, Mike Elliott, Starcross, Catherine Stars, and Indestructible, Indy Aaron. Thank you so much to all of those people. If you want to join the Pals Verse and get your shout out, you can do so by heading on over to our Patreon page and subscribing at the $10 or more tier. Want to uh, announce again. Our giveaway. So I have here two copies of two hardcovers of the Inferno event by Jonathan Hickman and several uh, amazing artists. See, they're all around me. Um, I bought two by mistake. Bought two by mistake. Classic. Because I'm a dumb dumb. But with uh, expendable income. Apparently, uh, <laughs> your loss can be my gain because I'm going to give one of these away to one of you fine people. And uh, it's going to be real easy. It's going to be real easy. So starting this Monday, whenever the episode drops, uh, you, the listener, all you got to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter. And we'll have you retweet a tweet with tagging us in it um, and let us know you've done it. If you're already subscribed to us on YouTube and, and uh, you know, have us on Twitter, that's cool. Just let us know you've done it and we'll put your name in a, in the drawing. Uh, We'll give it about a week. And then uh, next week we'll announce on the show who won, who I have to ship this, this bad boy out to it's 40 bucks. It's 40 bucks. It's an expensive and, comic. And these postal rates, it's going to be another 40 bucks. Yeah. Make him go postal. Don't do that. I'm going to spend it on you. I'm going to fly this out to you. Well, mm, the that postal might be a service. Strange. You, you, I wouldn't, you're going to handle over this? Is that what you're saying? No, no. That's Sean's <laughs> true dedication to this show. If you live in Hawaii, make sure you sign up for this giveaway. Yep. Sean you need to tell deliver me. it. Mm-hmm. You mean to tell me that our listeners wouldn't want me to hand deliver a copy of Jonathan mm-hmm. Hickman's Inferno to their doorstep? I can't think of a podcaster I would want to just creepily give me a book at my front door. <laughs> uh, no, that's a lie. I could, I could think of something. Yeah. All right. Well, I can too. Um, and it could be me. It could be me. So follow the steps I laid out above and... Uh, you could be the proud owner of a copy of Inferno. Uh, head on over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the comics pals and subscribe. That's one step already taken care of if you do that. Um, so go on and do that for us. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. So Kale can do a backflip. Help us get to that backflip. <laughs> we need that backflip. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, let's let's do some uh, let's do some some listener comments, Tyler. Sure, I definitely that. didn't add a panel from Spawn this past week to this question image. De- oh, definitely boy, didn't do that. I love um, that. So we had a couple of comments on the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness review. <laughs> so I, I didn't read all these. And, and is, Do I have to do a spoiler alert for these comments? Uh, I mean, listen, Marvel lifted their spoiler moratorium, so I think we can too. 
Well, if you're not this? okay with uh, that, now's the time to right. jump off because we are going to talk about Doctor Strange a couple of times today. Here we go. There we go. There's my thing. Got it. Found it, guys. Professional here. We will. All right. Um, so we had a question from or, or a comment from from Matt on that episode. Um, not the character from the comics that we love. Man, I hate America in the comics. Her immediate introduction um, in the movie. Sorry. Sorry. What's up? Sorry. Uh, her immediate introduction in the movie is the only thing that took me out of how mediocre her writing has been for n- near a decade. I much prefer the MCU version of America to the comics version. That is Patreon subscriber, Matt Murphy. Mm, that's true. Um, you know Noted what? America hater. Yeah, it says it right there. <laughs> USA down all the way. I, overall, I, I think I agree with that. Uh, I said it in the review, but, you know, they were they're build they're clearly building like this is the origin of her. She'll likely become more recognizable as the character from the comics, but with more depth, hopefully. And uh, I think this was a great introduction. I really enjoyed what they did with America in this movie. Yeah, me too. Not I everyone mean, th- agrees though. I think my favorite uh, interpretation of America is uh, the Young Avengers one. I think it was Kelly Thompson's Young Avengers. Mm. Um, oh, interesting. I like or, was that West? It was West Coast Avengers actually. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I think. Chakariah, um, welcome. So, Cam WG95. Hopefully, Kang takes more of a beyond role in the MCU Secret Wars, and Doom can be Doom, because only he can. Uh, maybe. I, I, I don't feel like that's going to happen, though. I feel like they really are setting up Kang as, like, the big, big, big bad. And... Doom came in too late for their plans. Yeah, I think it. Well, I think if we're going the Secret Wars route, I don't. I don't know that anyone will play that role of um, of Doom or necessarily the Beyonder. I can see Doom being in it for sure, but I don't know that they're going to go like the God Doom route or anything like that. Yeah, just I mean, because Doom hasn't been around that long, it would be a really weird pivot for him to all of a sudden be a god. Yeah, I think if they do Secret Wars, it's literally going to be a war with all kinds of weird cities where they can split up our characters, like the the worlds. Mm. Like know? the actual, it'll be the actual original Secret Wars, not with oh, elements okay. of Hickman's. Yeah, like that not yeah. Hickman's literal Secret Wars. What if they introduce Doom that way as God Doom? And then like, mm. I mean, I guess it depends on how they you know portray him in this but you know uh they introduce him that way and then later on you know we'll be like oh they uh they are fighting a guy who was god once i think there's too much prerequisite for god doom as a character i don't know if you Mm -hmm. can start there I also think it loses something because that like that's a very personal story ultimately between Reed and Doom. Mm-hmm. And if that stuff hasn't been established, then I don't know that it really matters that much that Doom is God Doom. Like it's just a cool thing. Mm-hmm. But it's not emotionally weighty. So I don't know. Oh, and that that comment was actually from CW Gordon, who's live oh, with us now. Okay. That's awesome. Oh word. Gotcha. Cool. Thank you. Uh so Lars Leon Leonhard, uh that's a fucking cool ass name. What is that? Like a Final Fantasy character there? We should do a ranking of uh, like of, of frequent uh, commenter names. <laughs> we up there. Yeah. Kilgore Trap, think, top of the list. S- oh, yeah. That's, that's S tier right there. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Lars said, uh, um, stop stealing Metallica's music. Oh, sorry. Wrong Lars. Um, <laughs> Lars said, I really love this one. To see Doctor Strange visualized on the big screen, traversing the multiverse and using a multitude of cool spells is like a dream come true. A great follow up to the first film. And Wanda was great in it. My biggest gripe is the Illuminati. It just didn't work. I think it also fixed Wanda from Wanda with Vision. That really wasn't great. I do hope they will later reveal that she was under the influence of Mephisto or some other being so they can redeem her. I love Wanda too much to see her written off as simply a villain for good. Uh, Chavez was a bit forgettable, great as a gimmick to move the plot forward, but the actress was a little bland. I hope she can grow some acting chops as she ages and grows up, but I do feel she could have been cast better and probably should have had some better lines and moments. So I think that I, I, I think maybe the casting could have been a little bit 
better in terms of representing the character from the books. Um, the lines thing, I actually think that the whole movie has problems with uh, the script. I think the script for the movie is uh, uneven. So I agree. I should point out Lars. Um, I didn't include it, but Lars, Lars, for those of you who don't remember, he was upset about uh, woke stuff in comics. And so he said that Captain Carter was going was almost fully woke in this movie and it almost ruined the movie. But they managed what? to avoid that. I'm not sure. But what is um, fully woke? I don't know. People she, find she what they awake. want. Two in these things. So, uh, yeah, she was awake. Spoiler, Doctor I don't Strange? think she was. <laughs> Doctor Strange, whole movie, dead asleep. Um, yeah, I mean, you know what? Other than that, Lars, I agree with pretty much everything you said. So, yeah. Um, a lot of people upset about Wanda's portrayal in this movie. We're going to talk about that a little later. Yeah, he, he seems to be on the opposite of what people like. Everyone was like, yo, I love WandaVision and the, and the development that mm-hmm. it brought the character. And I felt like this movie uh, negated that. And he's like, yeah, negated it. I'm excited. <laughs> so I think <laughs> well, this did, is yeah, like a... Because he didn't like WandaVision. So. Yeah, I would say you, you are at least in the vocal minority there. So it is, uh, it's cool to see a different opinion. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, why Ting uh, commented... Uh, I think Toby, Andrew, and Tom all being Peter Parker means anyone can play, play Reed after this. Thanks for the great discussion. Yeah, I yeah. think that's I think that's true. Yeah. They, uh, something just came out today um, that Krasinski was not the person who they wanted for Reed originally. Um, it was actually Daniel Craig, but due to COVID stuff, it didn't happen. No, come on. That's you. Do you believe that? I do. Yeah, I do. Where did you Where, read that at? Yeah. That was, um, um, what are you going to say? Den of Geeks? Fucking no, Sam no, Raimi. No. Sam Raimi I, said it. I, I, I DM'd with, it. With, with this butt, the way Ace Ventura does. Fan4news.com.net. Uh, it was bounding into comic. No, I'm joking. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, it was Discussing Film. Discussing Film uh, posted about it. And okay. traditionally, Discussing Film is, uh, and this is reported by a deadline senior film. Uh, reporter so oh. there's some weight there at least i don't buy it cw gordon says as much as i hate the whole it's mephisto thing i did think for like a second that he might turn up in a post credit being pissed that wanda destroyed all the dark holds um that could have i can see that having happened uh i really we're gonna talk about it later i really just the whole yeah. wanda thing i don't know the more i can, think can about I it the something? more i think it was a mess yeah we don't need mephisto we need Blackheart. Give us good oh, Blackheart. Give me Blackheart. Yo, give him everywhere, to me. everywhere. Mephisto is too, it's too much. He's everywhere. Jason Aaron, you, you're jumping the the proverbial shark there with the Mephisto. Yeah, where's Blackheart? Like I'm with that. Yeah. Specifically, the one from Ghost Rider one, the movie starring Nicolas Cage. Um, best interpretation. Okay, I'm joking. All right. Yeah, um, please. Harris uh, said uh, on this episode, I agree with Sean's take, but I'm not going to elaborate in this comment section because spoilers. Also, I am frightened in that Kale likes this film. I think we all shifted to a different universe. If Kale like a Spidey, likes a Spidey film after, then you know the end is nigh. My man, Harris, you do not have to worry. As long as Tom Holland is in a Spidey film, I won't like it. Have you, li- have you liked a Tom Holland film? I've never seen one. Wow, it's just unbridled. I mean, well, except the, spy, the Spider-Man. No way home. Right. And yeah, in Civil War, yeah. yeah. Oh, true. He wasn't that, yeah. Um, so yeah, then uh, Manny had a question on Discord. Is the MCU too big in terms of the amount of movie shows uh, to get into? I've heard from some of my friends that they don't want to watch all these movies, unknowing of the shows, to just see a two-hour movie. Mm, I, I get think it. That's fair. But I think Marvel is in a place now where they're recognizing that and making things um, both uh, great for people who have been invested in all this, where they can catch all these things, uh, but also accessible. Like, I think you could see Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and they give you everything you really need. You get more if you know, um, but you get what you need out of it. You know what I mean? So they kind of have to do that. We, we actually did this as a main topic a few weeks ago, but I, I, I think that um, I think that this movie, Multiverse of Madness, is probably up there in terms of the most it requires you to know 
or kind of wants you to know before you go into the film. Um, and I think that that is okay because at the end of the day, if you don't want to put that effort, it's like comics. If you don't want to put that effort in, but you still want to see the movie, you can go see the movie and yeah, there's things that might not make sense to you, but that's on you and you can still enjoy it. You know, plenty of people love the movie. So clearly there's something there. Um, but if you want more, you put more effort in, you know, it's just like anything else. So I don't think that there's such a thing as too much because the the individual determines that it's very subjective. It's not too much for me because I watch it all um, and you might not watch it all, but it might not be too much for you. So it's a highly subjective thing. I think everybody brings themselves into answering that question. And ultimately, uh, Marvel is very aware that not everyone sees everything. And I think they've done an amazing job of being cognizant of that the whole way through. So you're pro homework then, Sean. Were you the kid that uh, raised his hand at the end of class? Being like, teacher, did you forget the home? You forgot to assign the homework. If I did it, if, if I did the homework from the last week. Oh, you would throw other people under the bus just to get credit. Yeah, yeah, I was. Come on, shit. I mean, I was. Oh, is this your first time being on the show? Um, <laughs> Shenron says, "Sup? How are we doing today, guys? That is the energy. Thank you, Shenron. That's the energy I love to see. When you guys join this chat, say hello, talk to us. We love it. Thank you. Um, yeah, how are you? We're doing great. Today's great. I fixed a fence today. Oh. I mowed my lawn and then fixed a fence." Um, that's a very adult sounding thing. That's a good good job, Kel. A proper homeowner, except that I don't own my home. <laughs> hey, Chillmonger uh, says, yes, and I find that rewarding as a longtime fan in reference to the fact that if you've seen more, you get more out of it. Totally. It feels like the comics. I feel like if you read comics, which yeah. not everyone does, of course, a, a fraction of the people who watch these movies read the books. That's that's pretty cool. So um, thank you to everybody who wrote in for the listener comments section of the show. Really appreciate you all. Love when you guys uh, spend some time writing to us. Uh, but now we have a game to play and I have no idea what it is. Kale and I yeah. are in the dark. Um, I'll give you a quick uh, sound bite as a little hint. I don't know if you can hear that. Kale's not going to get that at all. Well, that's that's Kendrick Lamar screaming, which is so, horrifying. So, so I, I messaged Sean yesterday. Um, hey, uh, you need me to do a game for the show tomorrow? Uh, and this is as I'm listening to the new uh, Kendrick, uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers album. Very um, good. Very so good. Uh, that kind of influenced my uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> the big my game. So this this game this week <laughs> is called the Big Steppers. And. You know, I'm not, this is not a deep game at all. This is nothing like, you know, some people would say like Kendra Lakamara's lyrics and stuff are super enlightening and all that. This is a dumb game. And I took the idea of big steppers and dumbed it down as far as I could. Um, so this game is about boots and feet. Um, I'm going right. to show you Great. A, pair, a pair of big steppers and you have to tell me who it is. This is funny. Yeah, and I, and I and I, mess, I messaged Sean like, yo, if somebody calls me a fucking foot fetishist in this chat, uh, don't do that. Although now I just invited that. So, yeah, I was gonna say like <laughs> this is giving <laughs> me um... everybody in the chat shout feet at the top of your lungs, guys, guys. Uh, yeah, I know I was a big iCarly and Zoe 101 fan, you know, I you know, but oh, whoa, you know. <laughs> whoa, F's in the chat, F is for feet. Are these in the chat. boots made for walking? All right, so let's 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 get into it. I gave uh, I gave Kendrick Caps, you know, classic uh, red boots. In, uh, in oh, this they look one. orange. Uh, yeah, well, you know, foot connoisseur. You, no, not uh, uh-uh. that could be a page like a, a patron uh, a name that we give the next one. The next person could be the foot connoisseur. Oh, 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 uh, god! <laughs> all right, so first one on on the on the docket here is who's Boots are these. Uh, I'll let you master. each go. All right. Well, Ta- I was, yeah, yeah okay. Taskmaster. Right. Yeah, it started off easy. Taskmaster. Oh, what? Wait. What are the rules? How do we? How do? How do we go? I'm gonna call you each out, but I mean that was that was a, that was a warmer question, a warm up one. 
In fact, most of these are pretty easy. I will say. Okay, <laughs> so are, do you have enough? So like, Kale goes. He gets. It no, right you're or each going to answer the, the 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 same question. I'll just you know. But if Kale, but if Kale goes and says it, then I can just say say what Kale said if it was right. That's true. You, you think I thought about these these rules? I I, I listen, obviously I I didn't. Know. All right. Well, then Kale got that one, and Sean would have gotten it too. All right. So okay. This this one's fine. There's okay. There, all right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Who's this, Sean? That is Deathstroke. Ah, oh, Deathstroke, the Terminator. Yep, yep. Uh, I realize now that I don't have an even amount of questions, <laughs> but that's fine. We'll just <laughs> fucking handle it. Uh, yeah, it's Deathstroke. Yeah. Then, <laughs> Kale, who is this? Who's got that these beast, lovely, right? these lovely little uh, those little toes big steppers? Hank McCoy. <laughs> With those McCoy. little Sean, do you, that do you go have, to market. Do you have any differing opinion on that? No, I don't. No, no. Yeah, you're right. That's some that's some big old beast feet. Yeah, we could we could spot those anywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is the stupidest fucking game I've come up with, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Sean, you got these boots. Actually, this one is a little challenging. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I have an inclination, but I'm not convinced mm. that it's correct. Mm. Um, wow. What do you think? I'm gonna there's, say there, Emma, but I'm not convinced. What What makes you think that? Because listen, Emma got those. She got those legs, and she wears those, those heels. She okay. loves it. So, Kale, do you have a too. differing opinion, or are you in agreement here? No, it's the white that gets me. The boots uh, are there. To... Well, uh, it's specifically the boots, but yeah. Yeah, it's Emma. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know why I picked this most sultry pictures. Why yeah, not? I did this really late at, at, at night last night, guys. Come on, don't judge me. So right, we know Kale. what you were thinking about. Yep. Kale, never mind. Uh, Kale, you have this. Oh, my God. These are some ugly feet. I'm really, I'm gonna really work my way through this picture. <laughs> Got some Those claws on this one. Uh you can meta game it too if you want. Think about how the game has been played so far. What does that even mean? Yeah, we, meta gaming we, is done is like shout. All we've done <laughs> is shout who these fuckers are. It's true. It's true. Meta gaming is uh, finding the patterns and the questions and either leaning into them or actively fighting against them. Uh, I'm going to say man thing. Interesting. Okay, Sean, do you have a differing opinion about these big steppers? S- swamp thing. I mean, it's just, there's only one or the other, probably. Oh, well, you're so. sure it's oh, green, the, huh? The, hand, the hands are throwing me. This is about the feet, the Kale. This is about... <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's a highly visual it's, it, game, by the way. It's fucking oh, okay. man thing. It's my right. thing. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to throw you off with that one. I, I also I wanted to <laughs> have the word man thing in here. You know, Jack Wright was very close. I could have put Harry and the Hendersons on there. That could have been that uh, John Lithgow is in that, uh, I believe. Bigfoot direct to home video movie. Was that direct home video? Oh, my God. Uh, I feel like it was. I don't know if it was. Uh, but yeah, that's my stupid ass game for the week. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it. Okay. That's it. This is all honor and Kendrick. Uh, for, uh, thanks, Kendrick. In honor of Kendrick Lamar's genius, inventive, mm-hmm. classic mm-hmm. album. Yep. Mr. Mm-hmm. Morale and the Big Steppers. You provide us a game where we have to guess the feat. Yeah. Of a comic book character. Hey, I'm not mad. All right, Tyler. What does that mean? What does that mean, Kale? <laughs> I mean, I mean it, it could have been a, a Listen, huge means ploy. Whatever you to me. this, this could have been a huge ploy to see, you know, uh, to out you guys as uh, foot connoisseurs, but I don't think it worked out. I think if Marco was on the show, things would have gotten a little more interesting. But. Okay, but which feet was Marco going to out himself with? <laughs> oh, that last one. That last like, one, them, them claws on those toes. Oh. 
He likes Arco like, he is likes... immaculately manicured. <laughs> we, we, literally, we were literally talking about that. Uh, he asked me if I wanted to go get a Manny Petty yep. with him yep. the other day. Uh huh. You said no. See, of I would. Of course, I said no. You would. Yeah, man. I, would. I like when they grate your feet like cheese. It's great. You know, that pun intended. I don't know I if guess, I'd like but that, but they get the little uh, the pumice stone to you know make sure them things smooth. You know, listen. Or you could do the thing listen. where you put your feet in the in the the thing, and they have fish in there that clean your feet. Uh, yeah, Fit, literal fish. Yeah, have you not seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell they no. The, they, they eat just the dead eat, skin they eat off the dead feet. skin off your feet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. What? <laughs> you've never you've never seen that? No. Why Yo, would anyone got, agree to that? I don't want fucking feet. Yeah. Once I'm back down there, I'm, I'm bringing you down. I'm bringing you down. To that. They probably your... got out of Chinatown. <laughs> I'm it never is, doing that. It is not a big deal. <laughs> it's not. Dude, it's fish eating your feet. How's that not a big no, it deal? Isn't. You've never had a fish eat something off of you? Fuck no. What the? You say that like that's normal. That's not normal. I mean, I've gotten snorkeling where they try to like eat like the one chest air I have, you know. No? No? Okay. Just me? No? Okay. All right. Well, sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Jack Arias says it's frowned upon. Yeah, it's frowned upon. It better be Is frowned it? upon. All right, listen. Is he very good? Y- you called it out. I'm going to launch the campaign. 1,000 <laughs> subscribers for Sean to get fish to eat his feet. <laughs> Let's go. I'm not letting Let's fish go. eat my fucking feet. That's not going to happen. Fish, feet, fish, feet, fish, feet. I want to have feet. I need my big steppers. It doesn't eat the actual feet. Yeah, it's not Enzo's way. finisher, you know, like it's <laughs> nah. I believe it was eat, eat defeat, I think is what it was called. If if we get to a thousand subscribers, I'll get a I'll I'll get like I'll put you know put my feet in the water or whatever that is that you do yeah, when you know, but I'm not gonna like episode. let fish eat my feet. Yeah, well, I think you should have a celebratory maybe. pedicure though. I think that that that's fair. Piranha. Listen, what if they put piranha? It's in Chinatown. I don't know what they do in Chinatown. Good grief. <laughs> no, it's, not, right. it's not a piranha. It's not a piranha. It's like goldfish. Yeah, it's goldfish? not a big deal. Yeah, goldfish are like... pets. They well, should, you should put your pets to work. Exactly. <laughs> oh, nuts. I can't Listen. believe you've never heard of this. They do I can't believe you let that happen. I've never done hey, 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 yeah, it. I've, I've done, done it. it. Yeah. I've done it. Come on. <laughs> I don't want fishy in my feet. Yeah, multi ticklish, you know. <laughs> but I understand why people do it. Man, this got All off the right. rails. Jeez. That Listen. discussion about fish feet lasted longer than the actual game, shit. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I'm promising you right now that's never happened. That's just <laughs> Yeah, we'll see fish feet. Uh, <laughs> Listen, let's move on. Let's talk about Doctor Strange. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the multiverse of madness listening to okay. you guys. I'm going to re- reboot the idea of Sean tries. And Sean tries to keep us from getting his fi- his feet into a fish tank. Listen, I'll fight to the death. So if you had to have, have to any animal eat, eat the dead skin off your feet, what kind of animal would it be? Because um, fish oh, is pretty tame. Well, a dog, because well, they can lick it off. That could oh, be right. Well, this is getting into a territory I'm not really comfortable with. Let's talk about Dr. Strange, guys. <laughs> Or more Sean mentions peanut butter. Like let's just let's just keep going. Whoa, <laughs> Tyler, please. First of all, this is a family friendly podcast. Yeah, peanut butter. Awesome. I mean, people might be allergic. Yeah, that's fair. I don't want to get peanut allergies out there for people. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right, let's talk about Doctor Strange. So, Doctor Strange, uh, Doctor Strange Two did really well. Um, really really well in its first week out um so it it, it it's a juggernaut it, it really is uh 500 million worldwide which is an incredible number um by monday it had made 200 million worldwide we talked last week about how the conservative estimate was about 180 uh i'm sorry not 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 worldwide um domestically uh we talked last week about how 180 was the, the conservative mark domestically it, it made 200 million so that's pretty incredible and then 
um, worldwide, it's done 500, 3 million overseas, three, or rather 300 million overseas. That's impressive. With no, no China, I believe. China said no because of, because of America's lesbian parents, the 12 second conversation where she says she has lesbian parents. She has two mothers. She just says she has two mothers. And that was enough for China to hey, say no. I don't even think you do. You see them holding hands on screen. I don't even they think make you see a, that. They have a loving look at each other. Yeah, it was as tame as it possibly could. Not that that needs to be tame, it was but it was Disney as gay, like, which is like barely gay. Yeah, like in Star Wars, they had a, a same sex kiss, and then was quickly followed up by an image of a slug man. So like that's like it's it's Disney just doing it for brownie points, really. Yeah. Well. Uh, that that wasn't enough to stop this train because Doctor Strange is is making a lot of money, um, and you know we talked about it. Doctor Strange was built up to be sort of like the main character of this phase, and it's no surprise that that would produce this kind of a take, this kind of a haul. Um, and there's no sign of slowing. Word of mouth for this movie is mixed, but I would say it's mixed positive. So. Yeah, all, all guys, signs point to uh, maybe maybe a billion. Mm, mm. Do you guys know of anyone who's like seen this just from word of mouth, like who wasn't planning on seeing it anyway? No, I don't know anyone. Yeah, OK. Yeah. As I said that, I'm, I realized, oh, these are three dudes do a podcast. These are indoor people. We don't know anyone. Why did I, I even ask that? The people I know, you know, they they're they're into it. True. It's hard to find someone who's not, honestly. Yeah, it's, you know, people who aren't are squares. God, the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Um, But just because the movie is doing well doesn't mean that everybody's happy about it. And so a lot of people are actually pissed about Doctor Strange 2. A few reasons. The first one we're going to talk about is the gore. <laughs> Tyler put up a picture <laughs> of the wrestling character Rhino uh, hitting a spear. His version is called a gore, but uh, you're probably familiar with what a spear is. And he's hitting it. Now, I want to point to the referee in the back. Oh, Lil Nate? He's, he's, Lil Nate is selling that like he's watching yeah, a murder. This picture. Yeah. That's Lil a Nate good one. Top tier. Lil Nature's best ref. I would say when you said Hedner, when you said beef. when you said gore, I was like, oh yeah, it's <laughs> the only thing I think of. Yeah. Um, so people are upset because they feel like it should have been R rated. Uh, there were some <laughs> horror elements in the movie, which we knew. It's Sam Raimi directing it, and it, it was talked about that way. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's a PG-13 movie. There are some heavy scenes. Again, we are in spoiler territory. So if you don't want to know anything, I'd, I'd highly suggest you not listen to what I'm about to say. We have timestamps. Skip ahead. Um, you know, we will. Uh, there is a moment where Black Bolt's head explodes because he uses his power on himself. Um, and I think that disturbed a lot of people. Um, you know, it's, it's weird. When you said... There were uh, gory scenes. I went, what could have possibly? And then, oh, yeah, the guy blew himself up from the inside out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that wasn't even up. the first. That wasn't even the, the, the last head explosion <laughs> that we right. would see in the next five minutes. So, yeah, uh, we do have a highlighted message oh, from none other than Mr. Matt Murphy who says Gen Z on that soy diet. <laughs> sure. I'm sorry. I don't know if you can Boy, be on a I full soy that diet. Meant. That's you got to have a little more than that. Like it's just health wise. That's not good for you. Yeah, that's um, that's not good. Uh, so so these are actual tweets that people sent out about the movie. Um. <laughs> All right, so here's one uh, from at Forlornian. The new Doctor Strange should have been rated R. It had some very disturbing scenes, including body horror. I wouldn't watch it again, which is sad, because Doctor Strange is one of my favorite Marvel characters. All right, fine, I guess. I, I don't know if I would describe them as disturbing, but 
Okay. Um, Nate Black at BitMixix on Twitter says, at Marvel, I am completely aware that the new Doctor Strange is a big movie and you have it at PG-13. But personally, I think it would be the best as rate as R rated because I am disturbed mentally because of a certain scene or scene in there, rather not say to spoil, but just info for next time. Disturbed mentally. It is it because of the movie? Yeah, allegedly. Like this, this was booked as a horror movie since its inception. Like that was the first yeah. thing we knew about this movie. Even when like Derrickson was direct, you know, was tapped for it. Not that I expect everyone who watches a Marvel movie to do the research about the production of it and stuff like that. Um, but like, even in the freaking trailers, like shit spooky at least, you know? Yeah. I love that. That was my favorite thing that I read this week. I'm disturbed mentally. <laughs> if if a Doctor Strange movie can disturb you mentally, you know, spoiler alert, but you, there was something happening in there already. Something in that noggin was uh, a little tweaked. If you go to see Doctor Strange and you come out disturbed. And to be fair, like what better movie to disturb you? Right. Sure. Maybe you should yeah. be going to a strange doctor to help with that. Um, <laughs> but you know, I think like it's also like if you if you have if you're that you know affected by media, um, where you maybe you yeah. don't see rated R movies for reasons like this, um, but read read the the ratings have a description of what it, what's in there, you know. Right. Um. Do we have a? I'm curious actually. See, I'll, I'll look this up. Um. What the Multiverse of Madness one says. I think I actually might have that. If you can believe that. Uh, let's see. I can believe it. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, I have it here. It yep. received a PG-13 rating for intense sequences of violence and action, frightening images, and some language. Sure. I would say intense sequences of violence should, it, like, if, if that is enough <laughs> yeah. for you, that's a fair description. Does it, like, should it say, oh, uh, brain goes explodey, like... <laughs> At certain yeah, points. like how do you inform people of what to expect without spoiling mm. inherent moments in the movie? Like you have to, if I think you're one thousand percent right. If you're squeamish, if you're sensitive, which you know is your right, that's fair. You got they do these things for you. I have literally never looked at an MPAA rating because I don't give a damn. But if you think that you might be that person. This is why they do it. This is like those parents who buy a video game. Oh, my, my son Timmy wants to try out Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. Now and then you take it home crimes and your life. son's running a hooker over with a car. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wait a second, what is this? And then you want to sue Rockstar. Sue yourself for being I stupid. Say, I think there might be a market here. Let me pitch something to you. Okay. There was, a, there was an app, early, early iOS app store where you can look into see what movie you're you're watching and it will tell you the good times to use the bathroom during the movie. Oh, that's still around. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but what if they could have one for like squeamish people? Like, oh, 36 minutes and 53 seconds into this movie, a head goes explodey. You know? And like you can like start it, you know, when when the the movie starts, it'll vibrate you and you'll be like, "All right. Preparing. Let me uh that's run to the bathroom." Fair. Quick. I could Yeah, sure. Why not? Called I don't think or something. Like, I don't think that that's Marvel or Disney's responsibility. Oh, no. I think no. people need to, you know, use their heads uh, before they go exploding. Yeah. Um, also, people were upset about Scarlet Witch. Let's talk about that. People were upset about a lot of things regarding Scarlet Witch. They were upset that she kills people. Uh, they were upset that she basically. Um, is a, she's the villain of the movie. Um, and, you know, they felt like that was not in line with what WandaVision gave us and, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff. We talked about that in our review, so which you should listen to if you uh, want to know more of our thoughts. I won't belabor it too much, but I think Scarlet Witch, there were some problems with her, with her portrayal here. Um, you know, I went into it and I feel like um, the fact that she kills actual humans who are not coming back is a big problem, you know? And I think it's 
they're damned, they're damned either way. Because if you say that she had her autonomy, then she's a murderer and not a hero. If you say that she was under the control of the Darkhold or Mephisto, as uh, C.W. Gordon, I think, mentioned, or maybe it wasn't, I don't know. Um, then she has no agency. And it might as well have not been her in this movie. And it's irrelevant what she did in the film. So I don't think you can have it both ways. And I think that they wrote themselves into a quarter. <clears throat> oh, bless you. So, yeah, I, I, I completely agree with the critique of Scarlet Witch. I knew, based on the way that WandaVision ended, that we would not be seeing a happy camper in this movie. And I, I wanted that. But I think they went about it in a way that makes it hard to redeem her. Feels I like think... Wally West oh, circa boy. Heroes in Crisis to me. Um, I will say, I think I don't, I, I wouldn't blame this movie for that. I would blame the post credit scene of WandaVision because that set it up right away. Um, the, uh, actual WandaVision proper before we get to the post credit scene. Yeah. She has an arc and it looks like she's getting into a better place by the end of it. But then post credits, we see her with a dark hold. Everything looks evil. Mm. We know mm. something bad's happening. Um, I think the disconnect there is an issue because I do think the end of WandaVision proper is antithetical to her going full, full dark. You know what I mean? Um, but also like you can justify it at the same time, you know, like, I don't know. I think, I think they worked on the justification fine throughout this. Um, but still it, um, it was probably my own only real gripe with the movie. I think they did it well, but did they need to do it? I don't know. So, I watched WandaVision with her as a villain. So to me, it felt consistent. I, I did until the, the, the very last episode <laughs> where she kind of redeems herself. You know, there is a redemption. Whether or not it's a full redemption or not, up for debate. But there is at least an attempt at a redemption. Hmm. What do you think, Kale? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It didn't bother me. Um, I think for me, the Scarlet Witch is um, a fraught character in general, especially post uh, House of M, hmm. you know, um, because, you know, the mutants in, in you know, the, the Marvel universe proper um, still haven't forgiven her. She's, to them, a genocidal maniac. And I think, she, you know, from from her appearances in books fairly recently, she's still trying to make up for that. So, sure. you know, I think I I I think it it was a it, it feels to me like the MCU's way of sort of working that bit into the character without you know obviously having the mutants. Um, uh, I don't know. It didn't bother me. I, I I sort of think that the Scarlet Witch, as she's been presented in the MCU in general, uh, is problematic. In that, as you know, her her whole character in ge in general is, is iffy at best. You know, we we haven't we got the Wanda vision is the most we've gotten of her relationship with vision. Um, you know, we were uh, with her kids in Wanda vision, but if you didn't see Wanda vision, all you get is this vague memory and this dream. And that's her whole motivation. So what is there to hang your hat on really? I don't know. Ultimately, it didn't bother me, but I do think the Scarlet Witch is a, a problem character for the MCU. In a few ways, yeah. And and by the way, that's my favorite MCU character. So, you know, in her mm -hmm. limited appearances, I guess, I got a lot out of it. Um, and, uh, you know, I wish that they had served her better. But it's these be things happen. Is it because she's so Phoenixy? Is that <laughs> that's a part of it too? I really I I felt that the whole movie, and I was just like, ah, come on, man, this is not it. This is not it. You know, even down to the like, 
there being like, a, oh, the legend is that the Scarlet Witch will end the blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, Wong. <laughs> um, yeah, and they played on that in WandaVision too. And, you know, with the, the was it the Agatha, I don't know, not death, but, you know, the Agatha imprisoning or whatever. Sure, yeah. It sort of sealed that off, but, you know, it's <laughs> good, not great. Mm. We're getting an Agatha show, right? Yes. So, yep. <laughs> uh, people were also mad though about the introduction of the Illuminati. Uh, the Illuminati. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my God. Um, you know they were essentially put in the movie just to job themselves out to Scarlet Witch. For those of you who are not familiar with wrestling vernacular, that means that uh, they were put in there to die. Or to make, to make Scarlet Witch look better by looking bad. And I think that's exactly what happened. Um, they didn't look phenomenal in this film. Uh, it was cool to see them, you know? And, like, everything that they did with them was, like, cool. And, like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening. Mm. Um, but I think when you get past that, it's like, ah, wait. First time I'm seeing, you know, Professor X and Black Bolt and, um, and Reed Richards, they're just, they're just dying. Eh, you know, you can, you can get away with the, the the murder stuff when it's Infinity War and there's a point to it and these are characters we've been living with, but if you're just going to throw people out there just to get axed like that, that doesn't feel good as a fan. Um, and, you know, I read, I read a few articles this week where, you know, the writer um, was saying that, you know, it was never about fan service or anything like that. Um, and I have a hard time believing that. Especially they, when they played the theme for Professor oh, Xavier. Right. <laughs> Which yeah, was a that, sick moment, right? But yeah, like, absolutely. that's fan service. That's yeah. what that is. Um, and they had no other purpose, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I th- I would say there are potentially two purposes here for that. This could be uh, seeding the idea of the Illuminati yes, for yes. our Doctor Strange. Yes. Um, and also seeds a big bad when we get to an incursion war with yeah. M- Mordo kind of going full Mordo from this world because we essentially brought someone to his world who killed all their biggest heroes and now his world's probably fucked mm-hmm. you know so um, if we're doing an incursion event yeah if I'm Mordo I'm like yo fuck that world like <laughs> yeah, uh, I want right, to make right. sure I devise something that destroys it you know mm-hmm. um, so I think there there is setup here Um and I thought the shock value was almost worth it enough. Mm. So it's tough. It's tough. So to that, Chillmonger says, "Well, it wasn't the real MCU Professor X and Reed. Yeah. I could lose these variants." Yeah, I think I think I could lose them too. But I also feel like, you know, for this being their the very very first time we're seeing them, I wish that it was a moment with a little bit more respect for them. Um, and look, Raimi directed this. This is the same dude who, you know, more or less made a mockery out of Venom in Spider-Man 3 because he didn't like the fact that he had to include them. I would not be surprised if this was a Raimi thing. Like, huh, you think I'm going to do what you want me to do and do it how you want me to do it? They're all dead. If, if Marvel didn't want them to die, there was, it wouldn't happen. There's way too much management yeah. in MCU to think anyone could actually slide something by Feige. I'm not sure Marvel cared either way because they're irrelevant. And, I, and, and and that's the problem is that they were irrelevant. That's why I have such an issue with it. They're irrelevant I mean, because they're multiverse variants. Right. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I would argue um, that the Illuminati, even in the comics, always fucks up. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's but that's fine because they're alive. Yeah, I guess so. That's yeah, true. There's consequence to their screw ups. Uh, uh, let's see. Shenron says, I like the stuff with the kids because throughout the whole movie is the make it or break it of Wanda. Yeah. Yeah. Um, CW Gordon says, hopefully this means we won't get an MCU Phoenix saga, at least for a while. We had better get it down the road, hopefully. And hopefully it's built up to over many years, no, not just on. one movie. Uh, Got to do it. It's, it's part and parcel. We got one and a half movies. Hoping- Hope we never get a Jean Grey. Ne- a Jean Grey and Gen- I'll never see her you. again. Yeah, uh, we need fucking Emma. Catherine man. says That's what we, we need. Didn't need their deaths to showcase her powers. Agreed. 
Uh, but yeah, that's it for Doctor Strange 2. I don't foresee us talking much about this movie again. Uh, listen to our review if you want our full thoughts on it. Um, pissed off a lot of people, but it's doing really well in the theaters. So, you know, uh, pros and cons. I'm sure I'll, that Marvel's really pleased. I'll probably get this on DVD. <laughs> what? You get the, you get movies on DVD? Especially I do, yeah. DVD. I'm shocked by that. I uh, don't trust streaming services anymore. That's fair. That's more than fair. Um, did you did Jess go with you? Yeah. Jess yeah, is yeah. Kale's wife. Uh what did what did Jess feel about it? I'm curious. She loved it. Okay. Yeah, she absolutely loved it. The Scarlet Witch is her favorite character in general. Right. Yeah, she said that. Um she thought it was great. Cool. She was, Raimi uh, her, fan too? No. No. Oh, she interesting. hates horror movies. Interesting. But okay. she did actually think it was really well done. Um, but she, she was like, yeah, they shouldn't take kids to this. Uh, so that stuff was intense. Uh, but her overall thing was, um, uh, it's uh, pretty, pretty on brand for her. It was, well, yeah, it's another, uh, another film where the woman is right. And the, the male characters are actively fighting against her and stopping her from what she's doing. That's interesting. I'm not sure how Wanda was right in this sequence, but okay. She wanted her kids. That's fair. She she wanted someone else's kids. She wanted to steal children, which I think around here we have a term for that, okay? You can't traffic children across the multiverse. That is illegal. Where are the laws of the multiverse? That's what I thought the Illuminati would be in the movie to discuss, <laughs> and they didn't. That well, they're not the point. Yeah, actually, dead, this so makes you sense. You can traffic children across the multiverse. I like nice. how because the Illuminati in the MCU, or at least that world, was such just a bureaucratic. It, it was like a Senate. They couldn't do anything. Like just red tape. You know, like they, <laughs> they get nothing done. They yeah. absolutely suck. I like. I like how realistic how- that is. Look how perfect their world was, though. Like those pizza balls, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I do want those balls, yeah. pizza balls. Chillmonger says laws can be unethical, but where is the where is the where are the ethics? What are the ethics of stealing children? <laughs> like that's not uh... across the multiverse. Yeah, you can say. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's ethical in a different universe. I guess, I guess Loki would have to figure that out, right? He's the only one who really handles that stuff now so well sticking in the mcu dave batista the man who walks alone (laughs) says goodbye to drax uh so on instagram uh the one and only batista posted a picture of himself with uh cast members from guardians of the galaxy and of course james gunn and said haven't found the words yet. It ended so suddenly, and I was on to my next film before I could process it all. End of a journey that changed my life. Hashtag Guardians of the Galaxy. Goodbye, Drax. Um, how does that make you guys feel? Because I'm I'm in a weird place with this. So obviously, Guardians 3 is the end for James Gunn. He's made that pretty clear. Uh Batista says it's the end for him as Drax, which I kind of believe, especially based on some of the things that he has said in the past. Um, Doesn't this get into a place where it's like, okay, so the Guardians just don't, they're just not in the MCU anymore? Or do we get like a radically different, a radically different interpretation of them? Like no more Drax anymore in the MCU? Like how do you guys feel about that stuff? That make that tracks for Guardians of the Galaxy for me. Guardians Guardians has always had a revolving door situation with their lineup that I think the movies never really tackled. You know, because their the lineup works so well. Like they've added Mantis to it. That's about it. Um, but like in the comics, like every run of Guardians has a new freaking team. Um, you know, Nova, Nova's a part of it. Oh, we got Phyla Vell this time. You know, mm. Moon Dragon's here now. Um, Iron Man. I'm. We don't we don't talk about that. Any pride. Yeah, well, yeah. That run didn't exist. Um but that uh that tracks. I mean my issue is here, there's this knowing this in advance, is this a spoiler? Like like a, do I have to just watch this movie seeing how they either write off Drax or kill him, you know? Um I'd almost rather known this once the movie comes out, you know? Like similar to how like uh 
Chris Evans and uh, Robert Downey Jr. kind of mm-hmm. said their goodbyes mm-hmm. after Endgame. Because um, now, I, like, I feel like that's going to be in the back of my head while I watch this. Right. Um, but at the same time, if we do Guardians 4 and it's a whole new lineup, C.W. Gordon mentions Angela, uh, writes me, it might be a little, little iffy there. Yeah, um, that's iffy. But uh, I, I'm excited to see what, like, a whole new lineup could be, honestly. C.W. Gordon says, don't know why, but I assume they were all done after Guardians 3. I hope that's not the case. I don't know if they're all done. We've only really confirmed that. Drax is the only one definitely leaving. Um, but I, well, I can see a majority gone. of them. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Um, I always find it weird how it, uh, Bradley Cooper is never hanging out with these guys. Because I know, like, he's not there actually acting. Right. But it just always seemed like a disconnect between the voice actors and the physical actors in this like everyone was just chilling here but um i don't know i'd be I, I'd, I'd welcome a whole new like honestly if you could say all right we're doing a whole new guardians team i'd be fine with it maybe keep rocket and group i think they're they're kind of a glue there but yep i think i think that's a great hook rocket and group you know they they stand up in a, in a situation down the road that calls for a new guardian marketing too yeah yeah i would love to see that i I, I still really like Star Lord, I really do. I do too, but um, I'd be okay if he took a break. Um, I think there are uh, characters that slot into that position really well. Nova mm-hmm. being one of them, good old Dick Ryder. Um, oh, <laughs> that could be. That's his name. Um, you know that that could be interesting. Do you guys have any? If you could. Add a new character to the Guardians team. Do you guys have a, a favorite you'd want to want to see? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I really have been wanting Nova since they teased Nova in Guardians 1. So that's the easy. I mean, that's an obvious easy shit answer, but that's my answer. I haven't read a ton of um, Guardian stuff. Uh, so most of my cosmic knowledge comes from like annihilation. Sure. Uh, so on it to be honest, for me it's Drax. I really like Drax. <laughs> um, I so feel I'm like good. I feel like the way they've written Drax here too is like I think he kind of deserves a happy ending. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Um, but honestly, I want to see a uh, Jack Flag. Uh, in this. Post Civil War, uh, in a wheelchair, Jack Flag leading Guardians. Okay, that's that's my <laughs> prime Guardians lineup there. Bug, oh. Bug's great. I want to see Philavel and Moon Dragon. Oh, they're such good characters, man. Yeah. Beta yeah. Ray Bill, Cosmic Ghost Rider. You want that one? Ooh, no. Ooh, that yeah, that would be so. cool. Oh, okay. Uh, Catherine says, I'd add myself to the team. Star-crossed. There you go. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Just join Star-Lord up. Star-Lord anymore. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so Marvel has, shifting over to comics, Marvel has announced a huge, huge celebration for Spider-Man, everyone's favorite. Uh, 60th anniversary celebration is going to be Amazing Fantasy number 1,000. Now, Amazing Fantasy, no way that got to 1,000. There were not 1,000 <laughs> issues of Amazing Fantasy. Do they justify it? And how, is it? Are they counting all of Amazing Spider-Man as continuing Amazing Fantasy? Absolutely. Yeah. Do it. I know that to be a fact? No. But that's what we got to go with. Because otherwise, how do you get to this number? It's impossible. This is some real uh, Brevort math here going on. Yo. Tom Brevoort loves two things. Hats. One. Oh. Well, yeah. All right. Three things. Okay. All right. One is big numbers. Big, big, big numbers. And the second one is cheating to get to those <laughs> big numbers. I could have yeah, just well, left it at cheating and leave you guys <laughs> to figure out what I mean. But what was the, was it the 80 year celebration or? Whatever they did a year a couple years ago. Oh, Marvel Comics one thousand. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. That should have sold a million copies, according to uh, CB Sabulski. But uh, 
that didn't materialize for whatever it reason. was like nine dollars or ten dollars or something like that they're not you're not selling that <laughs> chill manga says i have the variant cover of number 999 it's transparent and intangible mm. <laughs> hey by the way if you uh if you are interested check out chill monger's youtube channel just chill monger on youtube go check it out he just did um, a uh, symbol of truth review yeah on, on wednesday so yeah um so you know while the while the numbers are fuzzy uh the creative team involved is not these are the names these are some of the names that we know are involved get ready neil gaiman armando ianucci jonathan hickman dan slot ho chi anderson kurt busiek anthony falcone hmm any relation there to uh, to a fictional character, certain crime Maybe. family? Yeah. <laughs> no, just Maybe. me. All right, uh, Rainbow Roll, who's doing She Hulk, by the way, which is very good. Uh, great uh, Runaways run, by the way. Mm. Uh, Jim Chung, Olivier Coipel, mm. Michael Cho, Terry Dodson. Come on, that is here's, unreal. Here's my issue with this oh here we go whoa um yes this is a fucking team of people but outside of dan slot nobody really screams spider-man to me yeah that's kind of my beef with it too actually neil gaiman jonathan yeah. hickman yeah i mean is, is this what bleeding cool was talking about all, all those years ago this is this jonathan hickman spider-man story that uh maybe yeah, Maybe it's not as um, big as I, I, you guys are right. You guys, I think you guys are objectively right. These kinds of celebrations, sure. I think, ought to include creators who we associate with the character. Um, and it's worth pointing out the art that you're looking at if you're watching this live or on YouTube is by John Romita Jr., um, who is currently doing art for the Spider Man book. Mm -hmm. Um, but for him to not be of the announced creators. For Weird. interior work is odd. Like I just read Thor 750 that had a uh, JMS story in it. Like that's a guy I figured you'd want on an anniversary Spider-Man yeah. issue, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. for better or for worse. But uh, like Dan Slott makes total sense here. And I'm excited for the Dan Slott story because I think that is with Jim Chung or Koi Pell, one of them. Um but yeah, there there's so many other Spider Man centric people you could have put on here. I mean, Zeb Nick Wells, Spencer, Zeb Wells. You know, like anyone who's been Mark Wade. You know, could have even been on here. I'm. You know what though? First of all, two things. Uh, I'm not convinced that this is the. These are the only creators who will be involved. I'm thinking maybe these are just the 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 biggest names that they wanted to throw out there uh, up okay. front. But also, the same month, they're releasing Amazing Spider-Man 900. I was just about to mention, mention something like that. I'm like, I don't, I don't even think this is the last anniversary Spider-Man issue we're getting this year. So it's possible that, you know, the more, like, Spider-Man heavy creators will be on that one. But we don't know. Uh, either way, taking this at face value, I can't wait to see what Gaiman and Hickman do. Um, uh, after that moon night, eh, yeah, that was a little. I can, crappy, I can maybe yeah. wait wait for a Hickman uh, anthology one shot sort of tale. Yeah, we sort of we sort of talked about this when we talked about Hickman's next project, and I think I I said something to the effect of I just don't see Hickman as a solo character book guy. Yeah. As you mentioned that, I'm kind of with you. I'm like, oh, what's, what's my favorite Hickman thing? Uh, Secret Warriors? Oh, yeah. It's, no. Yeah, it's all teams. <laughs> Oof, that was good. Oh, my God. Oh, Sean, speaking of, they they literally quote Secret Warriors in the newest issue of Crossover. Um, really? And they credit Hickman in it. Like, the character says it. Oh, I was like, oh, shit, that's, that's my jam right there. Oh, man. The wheel keeps on turning. Uh, and it's going to turn us to talking about the end of the Spider-Verse. Because in continuing the celebration regarding Spider-Man uh, and the alleged 60th anniversary, um, 
Dan Slott is coming back to end the Spider-Verse. Can you believe the same guy who is responsible for the following events? Mm -hmm. Killing Peter Parker. Great. Making Doc Ock Spider-Man. Great. Unmasking Spider-Man in Civil War. Uh, Creating Miles Morales. And is responsible for the relationship between Aunt May and Doc Ock. Can you believe that they're bringing this guy back to tell more Spider-Man stories? He didn't do all that. Yeah. Are you sure? That's what I read on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> oh I God. Okay. okay. I see where you're going. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Hold on a second. I was in high school when that <laughs> Aunt a, May it, it, and... <laughs> Everyone blames Dan Slott for everything that happens with Spider-Man. Yeah, so. uh, my wife left me. Oh, it's because of Dan Slott, you know. <laughs> but I'm going to exit stage left. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and just back off that one. Um, so, but, you know, they are making the decision to bring him back. Slott had this to say to Polygon. Marvel has decided to do the unthinkable, go big, and bring the saga of the comic book Spider-Verse to a fiery conclusion. Yes, that's right. Later this year, we shall all bear witness to the end of the Spider-Verse. At least until the animated films come out. Yeah. And and I feel like Slot's playing coy, you know. Um, As he's wont to do. Yeah. He I don't think that they're actually going to end the Spider-Verse, especially now that the movie's coming out. God, I wish they would. <laughs> I, this almost feels like an IP farm for the movies. Like, all right, yeah. uh, let's get a whole bunch of creators, see what designs they can do. Uh, <laughs> Shit, specifically, we gotta have content for two more movies? Specifically, I mean, I want to bring up the uh, Chris Anka uh, Night Spider uh, costume. <sighs> because Chris Anka, also a character design artist for the new Spider-Verse movie. Um, is that uh, Black Cat? It sure it, is. It's Felicia Hardy as the Night yep. Spider. So I'm, I'm curious. I'm fan. like, there is literally a person working on this that is also working on the Sony movie. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. Wait, did you say, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You say you're not a fan of that? I'm not a fan of characters who have an established identity taking on a different one. It's a multiverse. I know. And Felicia is just in a, in a different spot this time. That's a good costume, though. Goddamn. It's a good costume. Yeah, the, the eyes, but like it's just the eyes instead of the whole mask. Like, oof. Chris Anka. Yeah. Elite. Um, this is going to have a whole host of creators involved, but they haven't announced who. We just know that Dan Slott will be uh, presumably spearheading this whole thing. Um, you know, we don't know much else, but uh, they're going to end the Spider-Verse allegedly. I'm not a fan of the Spider-Verse. I'm just going to say it out front. Oh, okay. I don't care about any of that goofiness. So this is not for me. You don't have a Spider-Sona? Oh, I do. Let me tell you how much I don't. Oh, I do. <laughs> What's Letty, your Spider-Sona? Uh, Letty and uh, Nori made it for me, actually. Oh, okay, shoot. It's oh, fucking right here. Oh, nice. I'll, I'll, vamp, okay. I'll vamp while you do that. Um, so I, I actually really enjoyed the um, Edge of Spider-Verse series originally um, because that gave us Spider-Gwen. It gave us uh, Penny Parker by Gerard Way and uh, um, I'm, for, I'm forgetting the artist, even though I have art by him. Um, I, I think it, I usually think it's pretty fun. Uh, which, oh, OK. Whoa, that's actually sick. That I looks am- like what the new Miles costume was trying to be. <laughs> right. <laughs> So Kale is holding up uh, art that was drawn for him. That's actually his spider Sona done by Nori and Letty. Uh, Letty actually is the person who did our logo yeah, and our, our pals heads. So mm-hmm. um, that's so, really cool. So this one is, is Letty. This one, this one was hers. This one was Nori's. Okay. Now, was this a commission or was this like a birthday gift? Or? Uh, yeah, Jess commissioned them. Uh, for my birthday, actually, or Christmas. I think it was my birthday uh, because we went to see Spider-Verse and immediately after I saw that movie, I sat down and went, fuck, I gotta make a (laughs) Spider-Sona. And then I I looked down at what I was trying to draw and went, I can't do it. (laughs) So, so, So she got it done. 
Hey, Anyone in the chat have spider sonas? Is there, is there a name for your spider sona, Kale? Uh, not spider made. grump. No spider grump. Probably. Yeah. Spider grump. That's spider good. gramp. That's also good. <laughs> Jesus. This, uh, the cereal. The cereal bit. That's good. Yeah. Is like me to the core. <laughs> Do you have that digitally that you can post on the Twitter for everyone? Or you can take a picture um, of it or whatever. I yeah, just take a picture. Actually. Okay, that works too. Yeah, post that up. I kind of want sure to see, like detail, to see that. Yeah. So we were all devastated to learn that the human target is in its mid season, it's taking a break and going to season two, allegedly. I say that because. It was never announced as a season book. It was announced as a 12 issue mini. And then, you know, they decided to take some time off, um, which is fair, you know. But uh, to tide us over, we are getting a one shot, which is um, pretty interesting. So uh, Greg Smallwood did the cover for this. Guess he needed, you know, a little bit of a break. Uh, and this is going to be another <laughs> mystery needed a break so he did more human target <laughs> right <laughs> um uh, uh, whoa really know. that's your reaction to this yeah so it's gonna be an anthology style one shot it's gonna have Mikel Jenin, Raphael Albuquerque, Kevin McGuire and some Greg Smallwood which I again don't understand Kevin um, McGuire interesting yeah um, the reason why my reaction is that is because I just want, like, I'd rather, I'd rather you just, just not do this. Like, give us the story. Like, how far in advance was this planned? Does this make sense with what's been going on? Like, if this wasn't originally intended, then I'd rather not get it. I want the original intent. Yeah, it's not like people are going to forget it when it comes out. Like this book is a smash. Yeah. Here's my thing. If you're saying I can get more Kevin McGuire JLI, I don't care what the fuck it is. Sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> great point. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's almost like the the human target name because of the the Maxi mini series or whatever is now a bigger name because of all the buzz around it, then Justice League, uh, JLI, Justice League International. So this is like a stealth, like, eh, you want those characters, we could show them in here instead. Yeah. Um, I like all of the artists on here, so. Um, they all have a fairly similar style, too, to uh, Greg Smallwood, to a certain degree, right? The, the odd man out, maybe being Albuquerque, yeah. 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 Um. I'm not I'm going to buy it and I'll probably love it because human <laughs> targets been fire. But in terms of like, you know, me needing this, I I would rather not get it. But I'm sure that when we review it and everything, I'll be very happy about how good it is. So um, I guess we don't really know too, too much about it, about what this actual uh, issue is, uh, other than just more trying to figure out, you know, who tried to kill Lex. I think it could just so. be one and done stories of the human target doing human yeah. target things. I hope it's that. Yeah, that's kind of what I hope it is too. Yeah, I hope it doesn't even tie into the the main mm -hmm. story. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like it based on the cover. The cover doesn't show any of the JLI members. It only shows human target and some other femme fatale. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, I. These are not in the uh, show notes, but I really wanted <laughs> two two things I wanted to address that I think are funny. Um. And they're both DC related. So now's the perfect time. Oh, no. DC. DC is giving discounts to stores who order more Dark Crisis number one than Batman. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. This is what DC is doing. Interesting tactic. Dark Crisis is DC's blockbuster event of the year, and to ensure retailers can meet demand, DC offers an additional 5% discount on top of your store's existing tier on June's Dark Crisis number one. To qualify for the additional 5% discount, retailers must exceed their final order cutoff numbers of Batman 
118 covers A, B, and E. <laughs> so, is that the Chip Zdarsky one, too? Yeah, I believe so. Ooh, no. That could happen. No, that might be. That might still be Williamson. Let me see. Oh, because uh, I think that CW that Gordon says Chip is 125. Yeah, yeah, okay. there you go. All right. So, okay, um, because there's no way they're doing it for Chip's inaugural issue. Yeah. So things at DC are so bad in terms of you know people not buying anything but Batman that they have to basically, um, you know, come up with a with a, a, a cute way of getting you to order more of their event their event for the year than just batman wild i wonder i wonder if people saw the uh the death of the justice league and they went you know what if that's what this is you go ahead and take that off my uh my pre-order or whatever (laughs) it could be could be i mean this smells like just traditional stuff they do with orders there's always some weird, like, oh, you buy a, if you match the orders to this issue, you know, oh, they're returnable now or something like it. I feel like this is yeah, part of the course. I, I, I think it's different this on this because they're actively courting competition from their prime seller. Like, hmm. yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty odd. And CW. Gordon makes a good point that that is actually um, Williamson's first issue. So they're competing with a past comic. They have mm. to order more than a comic that they ordered in the past. Okay. Really strange. The other thing that I wanted to bring up, uh, this this one actually isn't related to DC. Sorry, but it's I, I think it's funny. Oh, you're not bringing up what I thought you were going to bring up then. I guess I'll bring I'm, up something at the end. What are you, you. you going to bring up? I wanted to bring up Ezra Miller. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the, the, did you hear the new wrinkle of the Ezra Miller? Sorry? Ezra watch. Yeah, Ezra, Ezra watch. watch. Um, uh, yes, I did. Uh, Ezra <laughs> was, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, yep. I, I didn't like prepare to talk about this. Ezra was arrested again, no. right? I'll, I'll correct you there. No, this is to add context for why they okay. were arrested most recently. Go Not ahead. the karaoke one. The, set, the the second one. I know there's um, NFTs and stuff, but go ahead. Yeah, the, the assault was filmed as to be sold as a video NFT. And this was performance <laughs> art? Or is that sure. what you got out of it? That's how I read it. This is buck wild. It, it's taking two of our frequent offenders in the news lately and merging them into one. I thought it was that they were selling the body cam footage, not and by they I don't mean Ezra, I mean like the cops or people, whatever, were selling the body cam footage of the arrest as <laughs> NFTs. I don't I think it might be somewhere in the middle there. <laughs> I can't imagine. I can't say which is better. Like which which do I like more? No, you're you're right. I film myself when I get assaulted for NFT crypto art. <laughs> God. Uh, Holy shit. Ezra said, I was assaulted in this bar twice in a row. I film myself when I get assaulted for crypto art. <laughs> That's good shit. That's that ought to save shit. his career. Yep. There. Sorry. Um, Their can career. You, sorry. Can you imagine? Can you imagine saying that to a cop? If I said that to a cop, <laughs> if I said that to a cop, the only NFT, the only NFT would be of my body splayed out on the ground after I was tased or worse. That's what the, that's what the T stands for. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into the rest of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to get into that. I don't want to know what the N and F stand for. No. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Oh, Absolutely incredible. I was surprised. Boy, I, 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 I was surprised you didn't throw that Flash. into the news, Sean. <laughs> Nuts fucking tased. Hey, CW Gordon, I will say some people are into that. Uh, and there are NFTs of that if you want to uh, buy those. So, Are there? Yeah, yeah, electricity play is a thing. How much? $69 starting. In. Uh, uh, I'm in. F. I believe it's F or uh, Doge or uh, oh. uh, what's, what's Logan Paul's cryptocurrency? Um, 
I don't oh, know. Doink that coin? Doge? I thought that was no. I think it's like Doink Coin or no. I don't. I don't like care. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Find find me find me an NFT of like of somebody getting their nuts tased and tell me how much it is. Dink Dink Doink. It's Dink Doink. It's called Dink Doink. Ugh. That sounds really stupid. Yeah. Um, mine, the other thing that I had, which that was great, Tyler. I sure. thank you for bringing that up. Um, <laughs> it actually ties in because remember we did that story about the secret history of the war on weed, the the, mm-hmm. the image yeah. book. Oh, yep. Uh huh. So the the um the lazy or bored the bored imp the yacht club uh, bored ape yacht club yeah the ape yacht club thing um. The dude who owned it is named Jeff Boysen, and he works for Image, and he allowed Image to use the the, the board ape that he owns, the NFT that he owns on a variant cover. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. guess what? This motherfucker quit Image. He is gone from Image like three weeks after that happened. That was 420 that that came out. It's just shy of a month after he's gone i wonder why incredible does it say like was it just humiliating for him like is there do we know the reason or he has a whole he wrote a whole message and you know whatever he says that it's a good thing and he's (laughs) you know it's everything's fine and And, great and this coincides with the giant crypto crash (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> that yep. happened this yeah. week. So, um, guy, pro- if I were that guy, probably not doing too good. Yeah. He's well, he, gonna... but if he's doing that bad, you'd think he'd want to keep his job. <laughs> do we? Okay. Do we know if he left, or he was? It says like, he future in, that. Mm, okay. He says, I'm, says, I'm leaving Image. But that could be a lie. I I think that there's more to this to story. Leave, you know. I, I think there's more to this, and we'll never know what it is. That's what I think. But I think it has something to do with what happened with that NFT. Uh, I just I just love how NFTs have like it's like grand opening, grand closing. You know, mm-hmm. it's so it's so beautiful. Um, but we're about to get into our main topic here in just a moment, and our main topic is actually inspired by a Discord comment. That we got an errant comment that we received um basically just asking the question are ongoing big two books boring now uh marvel and dc publish dozens of comics each month i actually looked it up and in terms of just ongoing series marvel publishes over 30 um which is unbelievable and I'm wondering, because this question got me thinking, are these kinds of books, especially when you compare them to more exciting limited series where you can get like top tier creators telling the very specific stories that they want to tell, are ongoing books old hat now? Are they are they not interesting in comparison? We're going to talk about that. What our favorite ongoings are now, uh, why we might be feeling like ongoings are stale if that's how we feel. Um, and a whole bunch of other stuff in our main topic. Twitch fam, stick around. We'll be back in five minutes or less. Uh, we will see you in a moment. Hello. And we're back. See? Not too long at all. Um, if you are still with us, thank you so much for sticking around. Make sure that you guys hit that like button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, if you're on Twitch and you're not following us, please do follow. Uh, if you'd be so kind as to throw us a subscription on Twitch. That would be amazing. Uh, It could be your Amazon Prime slash Twitch Prime subscription, which is totally free for you, but it helps us out a lot. We love that. Um, Did quickly want to address uh, the newsletter that Tyler did over on Patreon.com slash The Comics Pals. I didn't get a chance to talk about that, Tyler. Uh, You gave the listeners a treat. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So I put a a little... um... What's the word I'm looking for here? Oh, thank you, uh, Catherine, thank you. for the uh, gifted sub to C.W. Gordon. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. 
Um, no, so uh, yeah, I put in a recipe there for a Brooklyn tie I got from the uh, How to Drink YouTube that I uh, had uh, tried out first and really enjoyed it. So I put that out there for uh, for everyone. It's rum and beer in the same drink. So mm. I'd recommend it. It's tasty. Um, and also, you know, showed a little little project I was working on, what I've been reading. Um, yeah, stuff like that. It's fun. Good stuff. Good stuff. Are monthly comics good stuff? Big two. No. no? All right. Well, <laughs> all right. All right. Let's uh, end the show. Real. We're good. See you guys. <laughs> um, so, and, and this is something to where I really would love it if you you all on, on Twitch and you guys listening wherever at any time, share your thoughts because this is a very subjective thing, of course. Um, are big two ongoing books or specifically talking about books that don't have a limited run um are they boring you know are they able to retain your interest at this point um i, I i'm gonna start because i realized as i was answering this question in the chat that i was answering the question uh and i included a bunch of miniseries mm. and then i was like oh wait all these books a like four out of five of the books that I listed are from DC and B all the DC books that I listed are limited series. And then I try to think, well, I'm really enjoying white Knight, but white <laughs> Knight is a limited series. Um, and it's broken up into minis. So it's just like, wow, I guess I really don't have an answer to that. Um, but, I think that that is a problem that's multifaceted. So I'll introduce my thoughts and you know some of the ideas, and then you guys go. Um, first of all, I'm not reading every single ongoing, and there are books that have been recommended to me that I never picked up, like Black you, Widow. You call yourself a fan? I know. Uh, you know, there are books like Black Widow that that were allegedly really good that I missed out on. I missed the boat because I didn't give it a chance. Part of the problem with ongoing series is that there's an expectation that if the creative team is not like gangbusters for you personally, that it's not going to be that interesting. And that it's going to be some long, drawn out drivel that may not even get to be long and drawn out because it might get canceled. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've missed the boat on several ongoing series over the years that are great because I just didn't I didn't buy in at the beginning and I'm not going to buy in later. If I don't buy the issue one, the chances that I buy anything after that are extremely low. And that's a problem in comics. A big problem. Sean, do you mind if I just piggyback off something you just mentioned? Do it up. Um, if you don't buy the number one, you're not bought into it. Does that mean that? Uh, Marvel loves doing the number one um, with the legacy numbering, where it's not a number one. Mm. But DC's mm -hmm. kind of stuck to the legacy numbering recently. Yeah. Do is that a hurdle for you to get over when it's not a number one and it's like, oh, you just had to know that that's a new creative team if they didn't put it on the, or is that like equal to you as a new number one? It, it, it's equal as a new number one if the creative team is stellar. So when Joshua Williamson was announced for Batman, I said, okay, well, that's a bad example. I was buying Batman anyway. So, you know, I guess that's not a good example. But, um, I, yeah, you know what? Uh, if Yeah, I, I stand by that answer anyway. If the creative team is fire, and I know that, then it doesn't matter where they start as long as it's a new arc. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if it's not, if it's, if it's a creative team that I'm not sure about or whatever, I'm not buying it. You know, this is not going to happen. I think for me, and you mentioned this too, is the the tricky part with the ongoing series compared to a limited series, mini series, maxi series, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. um, is the threat of cancellation. <laughs> sure, like a Batman book, you're pretty, you're safe. You know, yeah. it will never be canceled. You're, you're, the creative team might be unceremoniously switched, you know, sooner than expected. But you're pretty much safe on there not being a cancellation of it. Um, oh, we got a little cameo hey. appearance here if you're watching this yeah. on Twitch. Yeah, Kale's dog Blake has made an appearance. Uh, but um, 
and I think that 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 threat of cancellation uh, or no clear end is tricky for some people, especially mm. because of the way like outside of comics media we are um, so taught the season format of things, you know, with TV, yeah. uh, movies. We know where the movie begins and ends, you know. And ongoing is so obtuse that I think it's only really specific to comic books. Um, so things like a Black Label book or a um, something like, uh, I don't know if, if Marvel is doing any, I can't think of any Marvel uh, minis or, or limited series currently. Thing? Um, I think. Sure. Is yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right on that. Um, that had a clear, it was, you know, one of six or something like that. Right. Um, I think that's more digestible to the, to any fan, really. Like, even for me. It, it also leans right into the trade. Sure. Um, CW Gordon makes a good point. Peach Momoko's, uh, uh, what was the line called? Or not the line, but the... Um, Demon Demon Day? Demon, Demon Days, yes. Or is that a, that's yeah. a Gorilla's album. I don't know if it's also named that, but... Demon something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but that was a, a limited series as well. Uh, where are you at with this, Kale? I find it really hard. So I'm a trade waiter in general. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll typically, if I like the idea of an ongoing, I will wait until you know issue six or whatever until they hit a trade my problem becomes remembering to get the trade because i also never get to go to the comic book store uh but also um trying to weed out whether or not it's good mm -hmm. you know based on what everyone else has said if it's even worth my time um, the, the, the one that I am very frustrated by is, uh, Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And I was so excited about that book for so long and it's now it's gone for so long. I, by the time I got to a point where I could get the trades, there were 15 of them and I'm a bit like, okay, wow. well now I am broke and I can't, <laughs> I can't do that. Right. Yeah, um, that, that's a very fair point. Uh, so you know, minis to me, if it's a, it's a, for the most part, a one and done story. It's even it's better, you know. Hmm. C. W. Gordon says, "Yeah, three fourths of my pull list is limited. The ongoings I buy mainly for art. Uh, the time between issues and trades for DC is painful sometimes." That can be a factor as well. You know, you get hit by a delay. Now it's gone for, you know, uh, two months instead of one month or something like that. And it can be brutal. Um, and unless it's like, like, OK, so Jonathan Hickman, right? Um, I was hung on every single line of dialogue in every book that Hickman did for Marvel, um, X-Men wise, really anything. But when it's not that, you know, and you don't have... Basically, the guarantee of like a what I like a sprawling, epic story with a lot to say. Chips Darcy's Daredevil is a great example. When it's not that, you know, when it's not a creative team that you're really hooked on, it's kind of like, all right, well, do I really care? Like, for example, Amazing Spider-Man. I read the first one; it was good. You know, it was cool. How exciting am I? How is it? How exciting is it still going to be? Fifteen issues from now. You know, does Zeb Wells have a strategy to keep me roped in for that long? Or are we going to get filler issues? We've all been there as comic book fans where we have bought that issue again once a month. And you get that that comic book. That's a complete filler. And you're like, well, what the hell? I spent four dollars. And I got to wait a whole month for the next issue. And this was nothingness. It's like when you waited, when you ran home after school to watch Dragon Ball Z to see a whole episode of Goku eating food. It's like, well, screw you, Goku. I want to eat food. Even, or even worse, like him eating food, I wouldn't mind so much. It's the ones where, you know, like he's do he has to collect the energy for the spirit bomb for the fourth episode <laughs> in a row. It's a charging up episode. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. At so, least yeah. eating food, there's progression. <laughs> 
Well, you, the way they would do it with those damn bowls where he'd be eating and nothing yeah. would come out. It's like, okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, uh, I feel like when it comes to there's, it's a lot harder, I would say to do a stellar ongoing than it is to do a mini. I really do. And I think there's more room for error editorially. Like I think of, mm. I think of Nick Spencer's Amazing Spider-Man run, where leading up to it, this post-secret uh, invasion. Um, so Spencer was a controversial, controversial figure, I would say. Uh, a secret empire, sorry, not invasion, yeah. secret empire. Yeah. Um, but he mentioned like he read every Amazing Spider-Man issue in preparation. Like, mm. dude did his research on it. And by the end of his run, I was like, yeah, he did his research. He brought back some weird characters, but it seemed that it didn't really know when it was going to end. So getting there, one issue seemed like it was getting someplace, while the next issue seemed like it was treading water. Like, pacing-wise, it gets tricky. If you don't know where your ending is going to be, like, issue-wise, um, I got to imagine it, it's not... It ain't easy probably writing that, you know? I wonder, too, how much that has to do with, especially in ongoing form, with character. Or, like, character mandate, right? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. it seems a lot like with Daredevil, most creators have an idea of how long they're going to be there. Uh, but for a book like Spider-Man, it just seems wildly different mm. interesting because spider-man i think is such a, a flagship character right you want to have your best foot forward oh this era is never gonna end but with daredevil it's like okay tell up you know he's got a history of really good stories and the hardcore fans are here for it yeah i think if you're writing daredevil there's less of a financial expectation on you. There's mm -hmm. less of a thought that, you know, this could be this, an errant fan could pick this up for the first time and, you know, just like, just be seeing this for the first time and be completely lost. Oh, Catherine, thank you for the subscription. Four appreciate month it. subscription. Oh, wow. Appreciate that. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, um, I, yeah. One thing I also want to throw out there is like, I, I think about, how creators tackle their an ongoing um you know spencer he treated it like an ongoing his spider-man run like each mm -hmm. issue was the next issue but I, I look back on snyder and capullo's batman run they treated that honestly not really like an ongoing but more like a series of limited series if that makes sense yeah like i could name snyder batman arcs death of the family court of owls um, uh, heavy, uh, super heavy, super heavy, you know, yeah. because he treated it that way as, as opposed to an ongoing, it was a series of stories, you know, that are in, in chunks, almost like seasons, um, yeah. where Spencer's could not tell you a single arc name. I, I think that there are a couple of reasons for that. Cause I, I, I think you can, you can do that for multiple DC stories. Yes. Yeah. You can do it for Grant Morrison's Batman. I can name every arc. You can do it for Tom King's Batman. Um, there, there are a few runs where you can do that. I think DC is better about the packaging of all of, all of that. Um, I think Marvel could do a lot better job. But when you look at those arcs, to your point, it's they're very focused. And they take in everything that's come before. But it, they're not like, you're not going to find... Well, in Tom's run, you might. But, like, in Snyder's run, there's not going to be a point at which Batman's just sitting around eating, you know? Um, oh, that definitely there's happens in Tom King's run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I there's momentum. Times. And even when it happens in Tom's run, there's a specific point to it. It never yeah. feels like the creator's just filling time. They know what their story is, and they know what it is the whole way through. Another example I wanted to point out, you can't name the arcs, but Immortal Hulk. Immortal Hulk is a great example. Mm. Why? Because that's a very, very focused series that has a very specific point that it's trying to make. Yeah. But Al Ewing had to build in ends 
every yep. arc mm-hmm. until like the third or fourth one because he didn't know if it would get canceled or not because hope there's no security there batman you can say yes uh i'm going to write batman for 50 issues it's mm-hmm. never going away people don't take advantage of that all the time and i think if you go back mm-hmm. To like JMS on Spider Man, you can see more of that that pre planning, that planning ahead, that very specific focused storytelling that I don't feel like you see as much. And while Nick Spencer's story was, you know, it had a he was going somewhere, it wasn't exciting. You know, I don't care about Peter's roommates. I couldn't get into that. I mean, I, I did care about Boomerang. I'm, no. I'm a, I'm a- I'm a vouch for my boy Boomerang, but CW Gordon mentions DC definitely cares about trades more. Yeah, um, don't recall ever seeing an ad for a trade paperback collection in a Marvel comic. I agree. I mean, like you mentioned JMS with Spider Man, I'm like, one more day was an arc of Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man at that time. Yeah, you know, like, but like, could I tell back you? Black. Could I tell you the the names of trade paperbacks for Spider Man? Not really. There's like Big Time. There's I know there's that Red Goblin arc, but like I, I can I can describe the arcs for you, but like I don't think you're marketed in a way where it is easily acceptable. It's it's Amazing Spider-Man Volume Six, you know, is what it is, um, and just the idea of writing in smaller chunks like that, like even like the Immortal Hulk. I remember that Zemnu arc really well. I had a lot of fun with that one. Zemnu and and Dario Agar. I couldn't name the couldn't tell you the name of the arc. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think so, there's an idea at Marvel with like the packaging and the way they market these things as like, you know, in, in in the idea of their mantra of the world outside your window? Like you don't need to know an arc because this is happening and it's happening right now. Yeah. I do think there's some credence to that being in their DNA, you know. I think it would serve them better to get away from that. Oh, I agree. Um, I think they need to use names better, use names more effectively. People connect to that stuff. Mm. You know, like think about all of the classic stories that DC has where you know the name. Like what if you're going to recommend someone like a classic Spider-Man story, let's say, or a Daredevil story, what's the name of the story? You're going to say... Daredevil by, you know, Bendis and Malieve. You know? Reborn, I think, is like the only one that jumps out to me. Right. By name. Yeah. Whereas if I ask you the same question about Batman, you know, you're going to rattle some stuff off. If I ask you the same question, even about the Justice League, you might have a few. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even talking about events. I'm talking about just arcs that we know. I would say I think in terms of Marvel, somebody who's tackled it interestingly would be Jason Aaron on his Thor run because it was essentially one ongoing story, yes. but it was Thor, God of Thunder. It was Unworthy Thor. It was the Mighty Thor. Um, then it was Jane Foster Valkyrie. Like, even though it was one whole story, it was different ongoings in between that really broke it up. Um, but I don't think of anyone who's done anything like that at Marvel since. Yeah. So it's it's a bummer. It, it is a bummer. I want to I'm I want to read more ongoings. I do. I think that one of the things we've seen and we've talked about this here on the show too is less pay, meaning less incentive for big time creators to stick around ongoings for longer periods. Substack has changed things too. You know, um can we get those level of creators on ongoing books anymore. I hope so. You know, Donnie Cates is doing uh, Thor and Hulk. Donnie Cates is, a, I would say, an A-level uh, creator at this point. Um, he's the only one I can think of. Please correct me. But like oh. A-level creator on an ongoing. I would say Jason Joshua up there. Williamson. Williamson, yeah, that's what came yeah. to Aaron's doing me. Avengers. Aaron on Avengers. Okay, yes, absolutely. Slots on Fantastic Four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was Honestly, waffling I think, I think on s- s- you know, slot there, may but. may be one of the. <laughs> yeah. I would consider Dan Slot an A list. Okay. Uh, he's he's just been specifically doing the big like the big like not really Marvel but like big two stuff. Yeah. Um. Um. 
Slot maybe has tried things. You know, I feel like there are some arcs of slots that I can maybe name by an arc. Uh, yeah. Um, no, Slot's good at it. it. He's no, good at writing superhero ongoing books. He knows how to do one it. One of the best. It's the yeah. only game he's ever played. Yeah. No, he did Beavis and Butthead in the 90s. And Ren, Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mighty right. Mouse, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, let's see. C.W. Gordon says, midway through Aaron's store run, so damn good. How is this the same guy doing? <laughs> I maintain there are some good parts of Avengers going on. So the, all the whole vampire stuff and the Mephisto stuff is kind of fun, but there's just a lot of other stuff going on. And I also liked Heroes Reborn a lot. I'm going to I'm gonna go to bat for Aaron's Avengers. It's a good looking, too. And Gorilla Man's right. in it. As Ooh, there's a, there's a character called Gorilla Man? You don't know about Gorilla Man? No. You seem excited about Gorilla Man, though. So it was, I, I think, just like a traditional, like, um, kind of pulp jungle adventurer who gets uh, a magical stone or something and turns into a gorilla. Oh, yeah. it's a um, guy. I thought it was a like a gorilla that talks. It is. It is. But he, he's permanently turned into a, a smart talking gorilla. Oh, he is a gorilla. Oh, he okay, is a gorilla. Cool. I love. Also a vampire. But he was bitten by Dracula himself. So he is like subservient. And also he wants to die, but he can't die. Um, All right. Everything you're saying is just losing more and more. Jason Aaron's Avengers, everyone. Yeah, Uh, yeah, I don't know. My final thought is that it's a confluence of things. I think that for me personally as a fan, I need to pay more attention to what is out there. Um And find the interesting, you know, find the compelling, because I'm not comfortable saying that ongoings are just blanket boring or uninteresting. I don't believe that. I think there are creators trying really hard to do great work. I have been impressed with some of the stuff that the um, X-Men line has produced over the last couple of years. Immortal X-Men right now, I know it's only been one issue, but that was really good. Uh, People go to bat for Eternals, you know, that is, but that is Kieran Gillen, who is top tier. Um, I like what Teeny Howard is doing. Same. I've I've been a fan. Um, Daredevil. I know it just ended, but it's coming back with the same creative team. That's stellar. Chips of Darcy's probably about to kill it on Batman. Uh, there are good ongoing books. They exist. I think you as a fan just have to do your work to find them, and don't shy away from books with creators whose names you don't know. Buy that number one. If it weren't for this podcast, I probably never would have purchased Rainbow Rowell's She-Hulk one. But I'm glad I did because I enjoyed it a lot. It was real good. I got a gripe with that book and, and, and Rainbow Rowell's uh, She-Hulk's uh, uh, opinions on pizza. That was rough for me. Okay. She prefers like a, a thick, doughy pizza. And she lives in New York. Like, yeah. Like a Chicago pizza? Yeah, yeah. No, let's not get into that. it. I don't, I don't, Come on. Nah, let's not. No, nah, that was offensive, honestly. No, I'm joking. It's a really good book. Um, I do want to throw a question out there for you, too. Yeah. You have, if you have to get rid of the mini limited in, limited series or the ongoing, there's only one or the other in comics. What would you pick? Get rid of the ongoing. You would Very easy ongoing. choice for me. Yeah. Okay. Get rid of the limited series. I might side with Sean on this too. Limited series right now, we are in a uh, almost like a renaissance of the limited series currently. Yeah. Um, but I think the ongoing series is what American comics is. I think that comics are hurt. Big two comics are hurt by the amount of limited series that they make, partially because it takes the top tier creators away from being able to do those ongoing series, but also because it creates a situation where ongoings do look less appealing to a certain kind of reader. Yeah. Or but me, uh, oh, sorry. I was just going to say the big two need to start marketing them better. Yeah, they need to step up their game for sure. Yeah. Um, if they want the top tier talent on their ongoings, they need to pay the top tier rate and they need to quit mm-hmm. jacking around with it. Agreed. Uh, no, for me, a limited series is, 
you know, it's it's easily digestible. It's easily findable, and it's easily uh, um, giveable. You know, you can recommend a limited series, and if someone wants to keep going, they can find other books in the same vein, especially in superhero comics. Um, so it's harder to tell someone, oh, re- check out uh, Batman 788, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> as opposed to um, read the first issue of Suicide Squad, Get Joker or something. I just read that last night. So it's just jumping out to me, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I get it. Shenron says, I think it's also people expectations and how it has changed. It seems that people expect that every arc of an ongoing goes to the grand finale, but sometimes it's stuff that happens to the character. Yeah, I think maybe we had more patience in the past, but I remember like, and you know, this may be unfair, but I remember Bendis' Avengers, you know, those arcs were hot. They were hot. They were hot. They, they, they delivered. And you have to, you know, people are paying. This is a, this is an industry based around money, like all others. And comics are more expensive than they were. Four dollars for a comic, it better not be, it better not be characters sitting around eating without a point. There better be a good reason why I'm watching this, you know. And change, growth, and change are part and parcel of storytelling. You cannot have your characters in the same place that they were at at the start of this arc every single arc you have to do it you have to do it i think media in general though has changed since venice's avengers we, Big we time. went to sh- streaming media we went to seasons being released at once the idea of the weekly um tv watching doesn't exist really anymore it's kind of coming back um it does like call saul sure yeah, yeah 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 um, but, but go ahead, go. Well, but even still, like before Bendis, you know, you could pick up a comic in a train station or at a newsstand. Sure. And you had one shot to tell a cool story. And god damn, if you even thought about uh, breaching three issues, you know, with Galactus or whatever the fuck, like you better make it worth it. It was harder before. Exactly right. It was harder before. You think you think that back in the day, people would have sat around for some of the stuff that happens in ongoings? There was, there was, you could not expect that people even knew who the characters were on the cover of the comic that they were looking at. Mm. In, when Galactus first appears, at the end of that issue... They, they beat him in the middle of it, and then at the end of the issue, Johnny Storm goes to college. Like, <laughs> shit moves. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think comic book creators need to look at that. I, I do believe that they need to look at that. How many issue ones have we read? And we're like, okay, that was an issue one. Or that was I an ca- issue half. <laughs> I kind of think this, um, this, this era of oh, – what's the word? I keep thinking about it. It's of, decompressed of storytelling. Decompression, yes. Yeah has i think it's uh i don't want to say ruined that's you know obviously too harsh a word it's affected both comics and tv Mm -hmm. in a way that has i mean changed the industry not necessarily for the good i i remember and like and to sell comics you know back when i started reading comics like covers mattered too because like i wasn't Mm -hmm. Social media wasn't really around. It was kind of in its infancy. You know, it was like MySpace and shit like that. But, uh, or like forums and stuff. Um, but like, I would, I would just go to the shop and I would, I remember just grabbing an issue of Punisher War Journal, some random, like 23, you know, and it was like Steve Dillon art. And like, mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't think young me appreciated that art <laughs> um, the way uh, current me would. Um, but like, it hooked me. It was like a jigsaw story. But it was like, I remember getting like everything I needed out of that one issue. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, I had fun reading that. If it was now, I don't even know what we'd see Jigsaw. We might see a, a, a final page reveal of a Jigsaw, you know? And then it's like, all right, well, then I got to read the next one. So to get to the thing you want to get, you have to plunk down another $4. It's, uh, it's oh, yeah, wild. Price was different then too. <laughs> right. High school, um, we can afford them. But 
that's that's our take on ongoing series versus limited series. Um, we leave it to you guys. What do you think? How do you feel about this? What are your buying patterns as it relates to comics? Um, I think that the fact that you know one of the biggest selling points has always been the creator, and now the creators are on the limited series, so it's like you just kind of naturally move over that way. Um, which, you know, again, hurts ongoings to some degree. What do you make of all that? Please write in and let us know. You can get us at youtube.com slash the comics pals. Subscribe for free. Like the video. Share it with your friends. Drop us a comment with your thoughts on the episode. All that's free to do, and it helps us out a lot more than it costs you. If you want to catch this very show live, you can do so by making your Saturday, starting your Saturdays with the comics pals at twitch.tv slash the comics pals at 10 15 a.m eastern standard time thursdays at 6 p.m eastern for pals pulls patreon.com slash the comics pals to support the show if you would like to you can do so for as little as three dollars a month if you'd like Uh, we appreciate everybody who has done so we appreciate everybody who listens to this show in any capacity doesn't matter you are all a part of our family uh make sure yeah. Before you, before you, before you even think, oh, I'm gonna subscribe to Patreon. They have a Patreon. Their show is gonna be. They're watering it down for uh, the to, so the Patreon people can get the good stuff. Not even. You think we get great content like a feet episode in the Patreon? No, sir. No, sir. That's main uh, feet, baby. Uh, all right. Well, uh, I guess we will get rid of the next pal and round episode that I had planned. Um, but... <laughs> no, but we like, don't change but the is... show for people who pay. But there's added benefit. There's additional mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, if you want to hear us talk about uh, World of Warcraft, we probably mentioned that on uh, that episode of Palin Around we did, right? Uh, we talked about yeah. video games. We did. We did. Yes. So. We have it. Yeah. There's a new Palin Around video game yeah. pals. Uh, Resurrected an IP. <laughs> yeah. So go check that out. It was a lot of fun. Um, oh, our Jack giveaway. Ryan's playing WoW right now. Hold on. Not to, not to just, you know, distract you, Sean, or interrupt. But uh, it's nice seeing somebody. Oh, in in Azeroth, you know what's? It? I heard there's a sword there now. Never mind. What class? What class? What do you what do you play? Um, yeah. So our our giveaway. Make sure you take part in that. Giving away this sweet copy of the Inferno hardcover. Um, so partake. Uh, details will be on social media and our Discord server, which you can join for absolutely free. There's a link in the description. Go click that. Join us. It's a lot of fun. Download the app. Uh, it's not our app. It's Lots of other Discord channels you can join, but uh, ours is the best, of course. Mm-hmm. Let's get into the plugs. Kale. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Toto in Tow. That's T O T O I N T O W. You can find my work at Kaleward.com. That's C A L E W A R D.com. I keep trying to get away from Pokemon and Pokemon Arceus, and I can't do it. I'm it's still good. in it. That's good. Are you I, shiny hunting? I, don't, I still don't know if I like uh, Pokemon Arceus, but. I'm playing it. So I just, man, I just love Pokemon. What'd you say, Tyler? I was wondering if he's uh, shiny hunting in Arceus. And the only thing in the world I want is a shiny score bunny in Sword and Shield. And I have worked so hard to get it. I got the, I did Mm. the eBay thing and I got the stupid blue ditto and I haven't gotten it. And I got the perfect score bunny to make it, and they won't do it. I just want my nice chocolate boy. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Is he brown? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, it would be weird if he wasn't. <laughs> uh, you know what, Kale? I have officially learned more about you than I ever wanted to know, Kale. <laughs> Would you be okay with a hacked one? Or is that is that against your morals? It's kind of, well, not my morals or whatever, but I just kind of want an earned one. Okay, all right, it's fine. I, I'm just saying I know of a way of, I, I've, I have hacked ones. So. It's not speak. If you get if real uh, desperate, you know. Tyler, your plugs? Um, if anyone knows where I can get more uh, stilt man legs, um... <laughs> I've been slowly growing my Stiltman Marvel Legend. Uh, he's got about four legs on him right now. 
Um, it comes with the hand ninja pack. So, like, I can always use more hand ninjas, too. So, if anyone knows of, like, a good deal on hand ninjas with stilt man stilt legs, um, that'd be great. But you can follow me at uh, Tyler Olson on Instagram and Twitter. How many stilt man bodies do you have? Only the one body. Okay. Yeah, I have a couple arms. But... How about feet ninja? Uh, uh, I get uh, it. Uh, like the Ninja Turtles, right? Is that a Ninja Turtles reference? Well, they're the foot, foot clan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pan. Okay. Well, I, I get. Uh huh. Yep. It's tracking now. And like, <laughs> took me a while, but there you there you go. I see where you're going because I said the hand. And the opposite. Smell of what I'm cooking. Feet. Well, I don't want to smell yeah. those. Huh? I don't want to smell feet. If that's what you're getting at. I don't cook feet, dude. And pig's by the feet. way, you you're the one that feet. lets fucking fish eat your feet. So I haven't done it yet. Uh huh. But you want yeah. to? <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying I want to. I'm just. I'm not saying I. I don't want to. That, In any that's event, all I'm saying. Uh, I am on Twitter and Instagram at Sean Soapbox. I'm up this week to do the newsletter, so I'm gonna uh, get to get to you know click and clack and away on that. Uh, I'm still rewatching Dragon Ball Z. I it's it's uh, it's been a thing. Uh, <laughs> it's been a thing. I'm also rewatching Better Call Saul because that's the best show on TV. Thank you guys so much for listening. We appreciate every single one of you. We will see you guys next week. Until then, we are the Comics Pal signing off. Take care, guys. See you next, feet. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Cal. <laughs> All right, bye, guys.